and that the, uh, the space of democracy uh, uh, must be preserved and broadened, not reduced. Um, and that there is no uh, reform that, that can be uh, uh, effective if you don't have a society which is free. Um, and if you do not have a society where the minorities, uh, and I'm not speaking only about ethnic minorities, but also about vulnerable groups and those who are considered by others as minorities, cannot have uh, the right <coughs> the possibility of um, being as they are, and I'm thinking here especially about the uh, Roma population on one side, uh, but also to the LGBTs rights, which are uh, unfortunately still very much not respected and promoted in uh, this part of the world. Um, so this one, uh, I think it's the, uh, the, the one part which is very, uh, very important uh, and that on which we will continue to focus, uh, to focus our attention, to focus our uh, efforts. There is another element that I would like to stress, and this is uh, and where there is a lot of work that needs to be done, and it comes to the uh, economic or socio-economic developments of the uh, of the region. Uh, and there again, this is not only a question of. Um, the fact that the countries are poorer than other parts of uh, the region, you know, that the infrastructure is not uh, as thin as developed as it should be, but I'm also thinking in terms of the perspective of the economic model, if I may say so, that the uh, uh, Western model is developing. We have gone, uh, we in the European Union, including countries of a long uh, tradition of the market economy and so on, have gone to uh, maybe the worst crisis in the last 50 years, if not more. Um, and this has been linked to a number of economic choices that have been made. Lack of rigor in the uh, budgets, uh, uh, lack of uh, attention to uh, certain sectors that need to be reformed, um, public spending not under control, um, and this has created and generated a, a situation which is the one that uh, uh, we all collectively have under our eyes. Um, this is an area that we would like to, uh, uh, to work on together with you, uh, because as you will be part, and I'm sure that all the countries will join the European Union, at that stage you cannot afford, we cannot afford that uh, the economic situation, the economic fundamentals are not in line with the fundamentals of the European Union. Uh, and we have seen, uh, uh, we have, and we are still paying the consequences of that, of that the actions of each and every country, however small it is, are, uh, uh, have consequences on the whole collective body of the European Union. Uh, it has taken a lot of time uh, for us, for the European Union, to understand that it was not just uh, good enough to say Greece is a peripheric country, it can be left on its own, because the risk was that the whole system could, be, could collapse behind it. So now there is a clear sense that um, we all need to take care of Greece, we all need to take care of all the other countries that have, uh, that have problems. And uh, from that point of view, it's very good that if we could start working on these, <coughs> elements, on these aspects already now, and we want to make it sure that uh, collectively, uh, all the countries of the region could be part of all these uh, uh, let's say processes that are turning progressively uh, uh, the uh, uh, European Monetary Union into a real uh, economic union, which are really start monetary union, which are really starting to uh, uh, put together all the, all the elements, not only on the side of the monetary policies, but also on the side of the fiscal policies, and of the banking system. Um, 
so we will, uh, I mean, I want to, how to say, to highlight these two aspects because I think that are very important, are systemic, are really the basis on which uh, the societies can develop. And if we can manage to have this in order and on the right track, I think that uh, um, a good part of the, uh, uh, of the work has been done and all the rest will fall into the right place for the most natural ways. Um, let me uh, now turn to, uh, uh, let's say, maybe, I, I don't want to go country by country, because I don't want to, how to say, uh, give marks to uh, uh, each of them and say well, this, who is doing get good or who is doing bad. But let me try to identify at least some uh, elements that, as I see at this stage, are uh, uh, problematic. Um, and maybe identify also some preoccupations, some worries that I perceive more and more clearly on the uh, uh, European Union side. Um, there is a trend, there is a tendency, and um, that worries me uh, uh, not a little bit, a lot, uh, that you have political processes going on. Uh, reforms are uh, moving, and then you have an election. And then all of a sudden, uh, the European perspective disappears, and everything is focused on elections. I know I'm not an elected politician, so I understand that I don't understand the, uh, what politics is. <laughs> um, but since we are dreaming, and uh, uh, we are speaking about our dreams, one of the dreams that I always had was that of a sort of pact for Europe, huh? uh, where if we really believe, as I think we do, that uh, uh, it's good for the Western Balkans to join the European Union, well, why not to have this, how to say, agreed Cross parties, and in a way that is, how to say, putting at bay uh, what has been achieved and what needs to be done in the European perspective, and not, uh, uh, how to say, an idea, idealist thinking that the political fight uh, uh, is just uh, made of niceties, but it would be good to try. Uh, in spite of everything else, to try to preserve this element of support for the uh, uh, European uh, integration process. And I have to say that in, when this is done, usually it works. Uh, and it works fine. It worked for Croatia, to be honest, where uh, I have seen, in spite of the electoral campaign and of the fact that there's been also a substantial change of political majority, but where the uh, uh, two coalitions, uh, the two opposing coalitions, have very much respected the uh, European agenda. Um, and there has been a very smooth transition from one to the other. There has been no, let's say, interruption in, uh, in the process. Uh, and I have to say, with all the uh, difficulties, this has been true also in Montenegro. Uh, to a lesser extent, but still, in a way that has managed to preserve the sense of perspective and the fact that uh, the society as a whole was asking uh, politicians to, uh, uh, to do that. And I think in this, there is a role for everybody, because it's also up to the citizens to ask them to say, play with their projects, but let me play with this. Uh, and again, I'm afraid that uh, uh, sometimes, and I see this happening uh, uh, nowadays in uh, some of the countries of the region, where the uh, uh, electoral processes have essentially blocked the uh, European integration perspective. And this is a pity. It's a pity because uh, a lot of effort and work had been put into uh, uh, moving the agenda ahead, and this 
and there is a, a confusion here. Um, the result of this is very, uh, very important. And this in turn is uh, creating in uh, the member states, all the member states, a sort of big question mark um, about the maturity of the countries to uh, be able to uh, uh, join, to uh, uh, accept the rules of the game, and to uh, uh, accept the fact that uh, in democratic life, uh, there are some elements on which you cannot play because then it's very dangerous. I know that actually in Europe we cannot, in the European Union, including in many countries that are in the States, we cannot give lessons to everybody because unfortunately populisms are becoming an important part of political life. But still there are, uh, 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 and luckily so, uh, forces who are managing to uh, keep these populistic uh, elements under control uh, and they are not allowing to, uh, let's say, overstep the borders of uh, uh, what could become then problematic for, uh, uh, for the countries and for the region. Um, I said that 2012 has been a good year for enlargement. Uh, I still believe and I still hope that 2013 will be a good year for enlargement. Uh, I cannot hide <coughs> that many hopes, and I'm not saying only because I'm uncertain, <coughs> but many hopes are now uh, on uh, what is happening uh, uh, in Serbia. A lot of attention has been devoted to uh, uh, the dialogue between uh, Belgrade and Pristina. Uh, I won't give you any scoop about that. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, the process is ongoing uh, and there is a next step which is important uh, on the 4th of March. Um, this is a key, key point and the point when I was saying before about the red lines who at a certain point become um, to see less red or taking different shapes, uh, it's something that uh, I had very much in mind uh, uh, thinking about the dialogue. And this is good, I mean, it's, uh, it's good like uh, uh, the idea of borders becoming less relevant, uh, societies being able to interact more easily, people-to-people um, -people exchange taking place uh, uh, in a different way. And once again, the role of the regional academy in this case and the role of this kind of networks uh, become relevant because you realize that uh, uh, we have the same problems, we face the same challenges, and we need to provide some kind of, say, uh, uh, <coughs> responses to, uh, to these challenges. Um, so we hopeful that uh, uh, really something can move in, uh, uh, in this direction uh, uh, and we are all uh, very much focused on this as we remain focused on uh, the, uh, uh, the importance of the reform process in general in Serbia, uh, especially in uh, sensitive areas like judiciary and public administration, fighting this corruption and this kind. Um, as we continue to be uh, uh, focused on the importance of creating in the society, I've said it several times today, uh, but it's important not to lose this focus uh, about the uh, uh, support that needs to be given to the independent institutions. Uh, again, I'm thinking, here to, uh, for example, to the Ombudsman, as it is important to uh, uh, provide to people preserving the uh, spaces of uh, openness that uh, uh, have always characterized uh, Serbia uh, along these years. And uh, uh, I'm thankful to what Ivan was saying concerning the fact that uh, um, it is true in the, the civil society uh, in Serbia and in the region has always played a very important role. 
actually it's important that uh, it continues to, uh, um, to do so. Um, Two thousand thirteen could be also very good year for Kosovo. Um, I think that uh, uh, important progress has been had been made. Um, we are now engaged in Kosovo in a dialogue for visa legalization. Uh, and if, um, it, which is difficult issues not only for Kosovo, it's difficult issues for the region and it's difficult issues for the European Union because it's one of those where uh, there are many sensitivities in our member states uh, um, about how to say the need not to uh, abuse the system as a message that I'm constantly trying to give careful that uh, because I'll say this is not something that you can consider as a given forever. So uh, you keep to uh, keep on working on them, preserving uh, uh, the elements that have allowed the, uh, uh, the decision to be taken uh, um, by the EU. Um, it's important because for the near for Kosovo because uh, hopefully in April together with the uh, report that we are preparing uh, also another report on, uh, on Kosovo and on the possibility of opening the negotiations for a stabilization association agreement with Kosovo, which will be another important uh, say step in the direction of uh, anchoring Kosovo uh, in a very solid way to the uh, European integration process. Um, we have another report tonight. April and to submit to the Council in April, and this is part of Macedonia. Uh, there has been a uh, uh, very good work that has been done uh, in 2013 uh, uh, between uh, the EU and Macedonia. We have managed to uh, uh, establish in the context of the high level accession dialogue a very uh, solid relationship uh, that is allowed to move on a number of Substantial files, important files like uh, freedom of expression, uh, um, like the electoral uh, code, uh, inter ethnic uh, relations, um, and uh, uh, we are now in the phase of, let's say, finalizing this work, which should cover also the steps uh, to be taken for the finalization of relations with. Uh, uh, and the main issue, and uh, um, in general, good neighborhood issues. Um, it's also uh, interesting to note that also in this area there have been some very important developments. Um, uh, the, the dialogue in the context of the UN and the main issue has started again uh, after more than two years, the negotiators have met in a trilateral format again. Um, there have been a number of very positive developments in the relations between the bilateral relations between uh, uh, Macedonia and Bulgaria, which are uh, very positive, and we hope that uh, uh, an agreement can be finalized in the next few weeks uh, that really could, let's say, put the relationship on a much more uh, uh, solid basis, even more solid basis. Mm -hmm. um, I do hope, and it is my real hope, that the uh, uh, present political stalemate is not going to uh, have an impact on uh, uh, this process. It would be a pity. Um, after, uh, uh, could be a good year, 2015 could still be a good year uh, for Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I believe in tomorrow. We will try to, uh, let's say, uh, revive the uh, uh, contacts in order to come, hopefully, to a conclusion uh, of the famous issue of the savage things, which is to say, the uh, application uh, of the Constitution to the line of the Constitution itself to the uh, uh, ruling of the uh, Court of Strasbourg, the Court of Human Rights of Strasbourg, 
which has a spotted an important element of discrimination uh, uh, in the Constitution, which is really not allowed in all the cities to uh, be elected the House of Israel and to the presidency of the, uh, of the country. Um, we had gone through an intense process in Bosnia uh, Herzegovina last year that has uh, uh, allowed us to come to Good understanding on a possible roadmap to upgrade the country closer to the rules and meet finally uh, its candidacy for its application to join the European Union. Um, the process unfortunately uh, has stopped, let's say, around summer, and uh, uh, now it looks like that uh, there is a new uh, determination of the political uh, parties to uh, work. We will try hard to make sure that uh, uh, this will be the case, and uh, I think that if we could, let's say, uh, uh, create the conditions, help create the conditions for the Bosnia to apply uh, uh, for membership, that would also be a very important step in that uh, the right direction. Um, I'm not mentioning uh, Croatia because. Uh, Almost done. Uh, there are still, I'm not uh, underestimating the, uh, the fact that there are still a uh, few ratifications to, uh, to go through, and the fact that we are now preparing uh, the last report for uh, Croatia, I hope, uh, in March this time on the uh, way of the chapters. And the force of one concerning the rule of law, I think it's a country of organized crime. But we are in the final phase and confident that uh, uh, this will uh, be done. And uh, as we, we say to us, it's a big and final welcome to uh, Croatia as the 28th United States. I'm also very uh, um, positive to say uh, um, concerning the developments in Montenegro. Uh, because they have done uh, a very uh, good work in terms of preparation for the screening process, and I, uh, uh, and I have to say that uh, the movement uh, is solid, is sustainable, and we really hope to be able to uh, open another, another we are really open one chapter, so in the format we have it's a broken the eyes, but to be able to do the Irish presidency to have a number of chapters to be open and this open to uh, have the real breakthrough with the opening of chapter 23 and 24, uh, uh, for which a lot of work has gone uh, uh, in, the last, uh, uh, in the last few months. There is one element that I would like to underline about the uh, uh, negotiation that we have with Montenegro and that I launch as a sort of uh, um, I hope more than I'm going to say, I think it's a sort of suggestion. Montenegro uh, has made a very bold choice. They have decided to include representatives of civil society in the negotiating teams. Uh, we were at the beginning, we were all somewhat puzzled uh, by this, but it has to be a winning. Uh, it has created a, a sense of much broader ownership uh, on the process itself. Is brought into the process uh, uh, experienced people uh, and it's having a uh, positive effect. So, I mean, uh, uh, if everything goes okay uh, in all the areas, think about for uh, those who actually start negotiations uh, uh, with the European Union. Uh, I've left uh, a date at the end, not because I think it's in the last one, just because it was not part of the uh, former use of space. Um, and I would say that with Albania, uh, I would apply more or less the same kind of line of reasoning that I would use for Mastor. A lot of good work coming into it. Uh, the, the, uh, we had identified uh, uh, 12 key priorities to be uh, fulfilled before. Uh, negotiations with Albania. Um, we have worked quite a lot on the 
political ones which um, have been uh, uh, produced, I think, uh, some, some relevant results. Um, there has been also some good work being done in uh, uh, the more technical part of the political uh, priorities. Uh, and now I would say that this is very much in the hands of the Albanians in general, I can say, of uh, uh, parties uh, that have the possibility of moving uh, in uh, uh, completing the work that uh, needs to be completed, uh, but also of the people that have already, let's say, entered the since quite some time, the uh, pre-electoral phase. Uh, and it will be important that uh, uh, there too, uh, for the citizens to uh, express clearly uh, uh, what they the want. Uh, Serbia, apparently, in the, in the last opinion polls, uh, the uh, pro EU uh, trend uh, is going down. Uh, in Albania, it's still, uh, I would say, more than stable, <coughs> uh, according to the polls between. Uh, 88 to 95%. Uh, this is huge capital uh, and political capital to be used, and that could really uh, uh, be a push the country to uh, uh, go in the right direction. And uh, uh, all the energies where uh, China is it would be uh, really a very, very good story. Um, it's important to, uh, uh, I think, to preserve this capital. It's important also for Albania uh, not to uh, uh, be tempted by nationalist rhetoric. It's, uh, it would be a pity to uh, lose one of the uh, main uh, political achievements of Albania in the last, uh, let's say, 10, 15 years. The nationalistic card has never been played unwisely. And uh, uh, we do hope that uh, this is not going to change in uh, view of the electoral process. So that's where we are. Um, we are still at the beginning of 2015. It's, uh, we have still a few months to go. Uh, we always tend to count in terms of uh, deadlines, but it's important because it helps to stay focused. We have now April now. In the, uh, discussion that will take place on the 23rd in the, in the Council, where we discuss the uh, reports on uh, Macedonia and Serbia and Kosovo. Then we have June with the uh, decisions to be taken by the Council about uh, what to do and how to go ahead uh, with the possible dates for opening negotiations. Then we have October, I will promise to report uh, on uh, the state of play of the, um, of the region and then the European conclusions in December. So I still hope that uh, uh, during all this uh, period and along uh, these deadlines we can have good stories to tell and uh, make it sure that the dreams of Vincent, uh, of Sonia and of many others in these countries could turn into reality. Thank you very much. Stefan, thank you very, very much for that really detailed and concrete account and of the path forward. And at the risk of stepping out of my lane and getting the thunderbolts of the organizers, it would be wonderful to have you in November when we do the last to revisit uh, 2013. So, uh, an extended invitation. <laughs> um, with, with the great clarity that most, if not 90% of the work remains at home. I'd like to use uh, the prerogative of the chair to ask you two questions before I open it to the floor. and has to do more with kind of the broader foreign policy issues. Uh, and the first pertains to the role of the United States. Uh, we have seen twice here the visits of Vice President Biden about two and a half three years ago, and we all remember that he came with then Javier Solana, uh, to the region, and of course, most recently, Secretary of State Clinton came with high rep uh, Catherine Ashton, which I think was a 
a strong show of common purpose. Can you say a few words about how you see the role of the United States in this process? Clearly, the EU is the driving role, but nonetheless, we do see the importance of that. And my second question is somewhat of a more practical nature, and that one that we, many governments uh, and uh, our own here in Serbia have been grappling with. Uh, we saw that so much prominence was given to the role of Germany, or the perceived prominence. Uh, wouldn't it be the case, and I think your insight would be valuable, there are 27 member states, and soon to be 28, thank God. Um, would you advise governments and administrations not to focus just on one country, but, and, and, and not only on the key countries uh, and going to London and Paris, but maybe go to Vilnius? Uh, in the case of Serbia, that's the only country that hasn't ratified yet. Uh, there seems to be a focusing on one or two actors and a mismanaging of the other relations to member states? Uh, two very relevant uh, questions. Um, on the relations with the US uh, and the role of the US, um, as you rightly pointed out, uh, uh, and I think that the visit of um, uh, Ashton Clint in the joint visit was display of this, there is a very, uh, I would say, substantial uh, unity in the uh, um, EU and US on the future of the uh, uh, Western Balkans. Um, I think that somehow the United States uh, uh, recognizes that uh, uh, the European Union has the leading role in the way it's the uh, enlargement process that is the driving force for, uh, for the region and so they are uh, uh, clearly giving us uh, and recognizing, recognizing for us this, uh, this role. Uh, but at the same time, I, at least I, for the uh, first Obama administration and for the, uh, uh, I don't have reasons to doubt it will be continued also in the second administration, uh, the United States still continues to be very much attached to, uh, to this region and uh, Willing to see uh, uh, all the countries, say, moving uh, uh, substantially uh, in the European integration process. Um, they feel that they uh, have a sort of uh, uh, role that still needs to play in, uh, in the region. They understand that uh, their role has been crucial. Uh, certain moments so it does not shine away from uh, this. Uh, but once again, they uh, uh, have a clear sense that now it's for us to do uh, uh, work. Um, and it's important.